Hey guys, so recently Rudy made a video on buying boxes and what boxes you might want to buy to hold and what boxes you don't want to do. So I agree with all the don'ts. The don'ts seem very obvious to me. I will go ahead and tell you the honest truth that Rudy looks at it differently from the majority of magic investors, the small time investors. He buys at a lower price, either because he's buying from MTG finance people who failed and who are selling to him at a cut. And I mean, these people are buying Fate Reforge, RTR. The buy list on RTR boxes is less than $20. That's the buy list. So he's getting a really good price on these boxes from buying from individuals who no longer want to hold boxes. And if he can buy a million dollars of Force of Will, then the price point on that is low. So his margins are higher. So he's buying lower, he's selling higher. And on top of that, he's able to have a distribution network, which is wider. So he can sell to Patreon, he can sell to eBay. Most people don't sell at that volume. Therefore, they cannot sell at that volume. It's a chicken or egg kind of deal. But I wanna take a very hard look at the numbers uh, this is A for Revolt. I'm going to separate them and say that, yes, there are inventions, but the inventions are so rare. It is not, it's a double lottery. You need to win the lottery of getting an invention. Then you need to win a lottery of getting the correct invention. So let me repeat that again. It's not enough to win the lottery of getting a invention. That's not bad but you have to win the double invention. So this is the majority of the cards you're gonna be looking at. And Chandra is the most expensive at 12 with the Canal at seven and everything else is kind of $6 or below. So Kaladesh with inventions is $57 a box expected value without inventions is $35 a box. So not the best, right? I mean, that's these are not numbers that we would want to buy a box of Caldas, hold it on to, and hope that somehow we can break the box and get some type of value. Unless the box itself goes up in value, which I don't think it will, unless the cards in it become more... There's a reason for um, Alliance boxes are super expensive. It's because of Force of Will. Now, obviously, more reserve list cards as well. All right, so let's take a look at A for Revolt, which is a better speculation. If there's one box that you might want to think of buying into, it might be this one, but this box is trending at 110 now. So it's not enough to look at the cards and say, oh, this is a good box. What can you buy it at? So if Rudy can buy this at 50, yeah, it's a great buy. If you can buy it at 80, it's a great buy. But for me, I can only buy it at 100, 110 at volume. So we have Walking Ballista and Paradox Engine at 17, which is very good. And that's the only difference. Those two cards are the only difference. Uh, there's only two cards above $10 in this set compared to A for um, Kaladas, which only has one card, Chandra. So with Inventions, A for Revolt is $77. Without Inventions, it is $61. That does not inspire confidence right um do you want to buy a hundred ten dollar box online retail and open it and lose half your value lose half your value essentially unless you get a masterpiece and even if you get a masterpiece it's an extra ten dollars on top so it's not looking too good on these boxes now let's go to the older boxes which i agree with rudy these boxes should never be speculated on and these boxes are a trap. I mean, I view them as trash. If you're holding on to these, man, it's the timetable that you would need to sell. Like you have to understand, there are so many um, efficiencies that Rudy has that the average person does not have. He has the ability to liquidate. He has higher margins. He has a better shipping process. He has an easier shipping process. He doesn't have employees. He doesn't, the average store or person thinking about doing this is, it's just not possible to buy a box at 110 and sell it for 200 later because you pay eBay, you pay fee. The box has to double for you to get your money back. Here we have Eldrick Moon, not looking too good. Uh, Eldrick Moon was not one of the uh, better sets in my opinion. And in that entire set, I mean, we can kind of look at the Ixalons, the Amarquettes, which we will look at later, but the Eldrick Moon 
I don't know. Overall, it's not something where that inspires me to go out and buy it. It's something where I think about it, and it's really, really bad. It's something that uh, I would not wish a bunch of Eldritch Moon on my worst enemy. I would not wish Wedge to have a hundred of these in storage because the timetable on it and the demand on it is very little. Uh, here we have Nahiri, which is $7 now. I think it's a fantastic investment, $7. Oh, was this Shadows over Innistrad? It's been <laughs> so long. Uh, is this Eldritch Moon or Shadows? I think it's Shadows, right, with the symbol. But anyway, this set is also has one card over $10, and that's about it. Uh, the other set we had the oh it's the same set I just doubled the uh, image <laughs> I was like whoa am I looking at Eldritch Moon again anyway overall not the best uh, set one card over ten dollars is not going to do it so Battle for Zendikar Contra Tarkir I mean people are saying Contra Tarkir is, is this amazing booster box set and it's but when you look at the actual value in the set, you get a different story. Like this story is very, very different. Um, so when you look at the Scars of Meriden and New Phyrexia, opening a New Phyrexia box, you get $252. That's very good. Opening Contra Tarkir box, you, Contra Tarkir is only $72. It's so different. It's four times as much expected value from New Phyrexia as Contra Tarkir. Therefore, in my opinion, Cards and Tarkir should not be. Uh, the box price should be correlated to the expected value. Uh, now we get to uh, Amaket. We have one card at eight, two cards at seven, one card at six, and a few cards at four. But you can see that the majority of them are Mythics minus Anointed Possession. And that's it. I mean, yes, I get that there are masterpieces in this set. But what I'm saying is... Even with the masterpieces, these boxes are worth very little. Um, as soon as they get open, all the value. So what makes a good box? I think a good box would be New Phyrexia. You buy for $350, and then you know $350 is on eBay. I think $300 is the lowest I've ever seen. You open it, you lose $50, but you got some really cool cards. The percentage, I think I'm looking at it from a percentage point of view. Like Amaket is $49 with invocations, $39 without. Devastation is $54 with. 40, I mean, these are terrible prices. Like, these are terrible prices if you're buying boxes at $100. Uh, and they're just not sustainable because a lot of times what happens is selling a box is difficult. Uh, the box condition is matters to a lot of people who buy it. They get returned at a higher frequency than single cards, especially in standard. Uh, there is a smaller amount of people who want to collect boxes. And those out of those people who want to collect boxes, I'm pretty sure that they don't want to collect standard boxes or recent standard boxes because they can buy from a local store. They can buy from anywhere, right? You used to be able to buy RTR from Target or from Walmart at least. So here we have our devastation. I this is the set I criticize the most because a lot of YouTubers like this set. I saw the value and I was like, wow, this is a terrible value. Our devastation is just, I mean, it's better than Armor Cat, but like when we're talking about how much better is it, it's not much better. Now the one point I will say is you look at the, you might be like, oh, maybe we should buy Dominaria, Guild of Ravnica, Ixlan. No. Do not buy them because these prices are inflated due to standard. The true prices are what happens at the lowest point. So it's kind of like when you buy a stock. You don't buy it at the highest point. If you know, in this case we know a rotation is coming, you wouldn't want to buy something before the rotation. You'd want to plummet the price, unless you want to play with it, of course. And then, you know, oh, this is Eldrick Moon. So it was Shadows over Innistrad. I double dipped it on the shadows over Innistrad. All right, so Eldritch Moon, we got one Lily. And this Lily, if you remember in my previous video, I said you should buy her. This is the only card that rotated out that I would have even been remotely interested in buying. Um, we do have a Collected Brutality at Rare that is $17. Emiko at 14 so it's not bad. And then we have a Grim Flare at 9 So... Eldritch Moon, the reason that Eldritch Moon is so bad, 
uh, the expected value wise is there's a lot of penny cards. There's a lot of cards that are not worth any amount of money. However, you do have, would I rather have a $48 Liliana in the set as a mythic or would I rather have a inventions in the set? I would much rather take the Liliana because at least I know that she's in the set. Like there's not a lottery within the lottery. I mean, I guess there is because you have to get a mythic, but then you have to get the right mythic. But for the inventions and the... Man, I, I just don't like it. Um, I, I don't like the masterpiece system. I think that it is very... It inflates the price of a box. But let's say someone buys a box of... About Amaket and they hold it. What are they hoping to happen to it? Like, what's the best case scenario for that box of Amaket? When there are tens of thousands of boxes sitting in some other dude's closet. There's no best case scenario. Um, you open it. Maybe the best case scenario is you draft it and you open it. But you can always buy a box at a good price at a later date. There's no urgency. Now we're going to see what actually what happens later later, right? So these sets, uh, the Aldrich Moon, and the, it's still kind of recent. A for Revolt. Still relatively recent sets that rotated out. But when we talk about sets like Zendikar, Battle for Zendikar, and Oath of the Gatewatch, Battle for Zendikar without Expeditions is 25 bucks. A booster box. That's the expected value. Let me repeat that to you. A Battle for Zendikar box, if you opened it and you didn't get an Expedition, which is a majority of boxes, is $25. If you did get it with the Expeditions, it is around $49. Oath of the Gatewatch is slightly better. It has a tighter margins it has 42 without and 57 with these are terrible numbers guys like I, I don't know what to say to you like except um this is battle for zendikar you have uh ogamog and then you have gideon drana is only five dollars i mean man she went to what 15 and back to five again so it's not looking great um it is not looking great for buying boxes i think even A for Revolt, because you have to understand what are you buying the box at? So A for Revolt is selling for 110, but it's if you open it, it's 70 bucks. So you lose $40, you lose 33% more, 40% of your value by opening it. And now I, I will always say that like, Open Booster says opening is priceless, and there is some truth to that, of course, but for the majority of people, it does have a certain price to it. There is a price to pay for opening a box. Otherwise, if you could plus every box you opened, that would not be reasonable, right? Then no store would ever sell you any amount of boxes. Anyway, that's it. Hi, guys.